going guys, welcome back to Quentin in the Gunga. Today we're doing ankle holsters and there's still space for them in today's EDC market. Um, it's something that you don't see very often anymore, but that's actually advantageous. As you can see in the video, ankle holsters have an advantage because it is different. Um, very few people actually spot ankle holsters because no one actually looks for them anymore. Um, meaning that you've got a bit of an edge being different. As with all my holster reviews, I'll be going through things I like and construction, any special features, and then some disadvantages or things that I don't like about this specific holster. Now to start off, this firearm is safe. This is my little 30A Special Rossi. It's clear and safe. Um, let's carry on. Let's get to construction first. This is a El Paso leather product. I've had this for about five years now. I carried this for a year solid whilst I was still in aviation. As a flight instructor because you've got a tuck and shirt it's very difficult to really conceal something and conceal it comfortably so this i carried on my ankle um, quite comfortably in that and then whilst flying as well so this is a very clever design actually you can see the guys at, at el paso know what they what they're doing um, two different leathers this is a full grain veg tanned leather so this is a bit sturdier um, just to just hold the firearm in place and which means it's a bit, a bit stronger. Now the strap part of it is full grain chrome tan leather, meaning this is more pliable and a bit soft. You can actually see it when I'm, when I'm pressing into it. So that's, that's actually very clever. This is non-woven uh, saddle felt. So this sits against your, against your body, against your leg. I prefer having a sock in between here just for, just for helping a bit with the sweat. Um, so this is actually super, super comfortable to wear. Um, this is SABS grade um, hook and loop, hook and loop, sorry, um, adjustable material. So if you've got fatter ankles or thinner ankles, this is going to work for you. Um, I've got the thinner ankles, so this is this is perfect for me. Uh, fat ankles as well. It just goes a bit more open, but then that that sock part is actually quite quite important. So that that just stops this velcro part from rubbing up against your skin. This is a thumb breakaway clip. Now mine, I actually lost ages ago because I didn't I didn't really use it. Um, I know you should use it because of the safety aspect. This doesn't have a closed trigger, so the safety part of this to keep to keep you putting. Um, to keep you from pulling the trigger is that this clips in tight keeping your hammer down so even if you pull this here it's not going to move your hammer to the back but the retention of this is so good you actually don't need it to clip on to to keep it in place so purely a safety aspect and not really a functional one this it does it does uh, slow down your draw a little bit but not by much because you could just hit your thumb in there and you pop it out so that's the, that's the construction. I've got five criteria for good holsters. Now check out my link, should be on top of the page, uh, for the whole video that I did explaining everything. But the basics come down to um, if a holster makes my criteria for EDC or for everyday carry. So let's use the same five things and apply it to this holster. So firearm retention. So, so retention we actually did already. It does need to fall out and then movements you need to do without using your firearm. Now it is more solid with this little clip here, but even without it, this is a super solid system. This definitely isn't just going to fall out. After that is movement. So you need to be able to move comfortably and then your, your movement shouldn't be impaired by, by what you carry. So I'll do a bit of a runabout just to, just to check the holster and then also check the retention as well. Number three is a closed trigger guard. So as stated earlier, this does not have a closed trigger guard. The trigger is open completely, meaning that in a Glock scenario, it's not going to be a safe holster to carry. But this isn't a Glock. I've got a hammer. This is old school. So this hammer needs to carry all the all the way back uh, to be able to, to fire the round off. So if you pull on this trigger all the way, that's a long way for it to travel before it goes off. Now, what this does, is that it blocks off your hammer, keeping your hammer down once it's tightened down, and then as you pull that there, maybe by accident, it's not going to go off and then maybe shoot the side of your ankle off. Now next up is a one second draw. So with all my firearms, I want to have a one second draw. 
So with this one is actually quite a bit of a different story. So with this is when you're standing, that's actually worst case scenario for drawing a firearm. So just imagine traveling all the way down to your ankle and then getting getting your firearm out. That's a long way to travel. That's a long time. So this is actually advantageous in different body positions. Let's say sitting down, sitting in your car, uh, sitting in the office at a, at a desk like this one, and then also in the fetal position. So let's say you've been attacked, you've been taken to the ground, the birds are kicking you, uh, something like that. It's easy just to lie in that position, get the firearm out, and then start, start your party. But let's get back to the one second draw. Let's check that out now. So that was not a successful test, meaning that I didn't make the one second draw. So by that standard, I don't actually want to carry this. But this I won't carry as a primary weapon, I will carry this as a secondary weapon. And that's actually where this, this came into play. Um, where guys wanted to have their side arm, which was probably a revolver, going back to the 70s and 80s most of the guys especially in america still carrying revolvers and then it's a bit of a machine trying to reload that fast even with a speed loader which i've got from my, my 357 so it still takes a lot of time so usually what they decided to do is either reholster it drop the firearm and then go to your secondary firearm so that's just that's just a bit of a, a faster way to get to get back into the action or in a very compromising position as stated earlier maybe lying on the ground fetal position where you can't get to your get to your sidearm then go for the ankle holster as a as a surprise for, for the bad guys now let's move on to the hard versus soft holster criteria that i've got now i prefer a whole hard holster like this meaning the kydex system especially for my glock you don't want anything to get into your trigger guard and maybe set off the, the firearm by accident. Now, that isn't a major problem with this veg tanned leather because it is very solid. This definitely isn't going to fold and then go into your, your trigger. Also, it's not really a problem when you reholster this firearm because I can keep my thumb on the, on the hammer whilst I'm reholstering it, making sure that nothing goes into the trigger. Now let's go to some of the disadvantages. So disadvantage number one, which is probably the most important to me, is that it is slower. I'm not hitting that one second draws, and it's a bit uncomfortable trying to trying to draw your weapon while standing. So in a compromising position, I think that's where that's where this comes into play. Also that this is made for a right-handed shooter. So this is a ankle holster for right-handed shooters, meaning that this goes onto your ankle, but you can put it on either your um, your dominant leg side or the inside of your of your other leg. Um, I prefer having it on the inside of my left leg, meaning that it is nice and concealed. This inside of the body, I can just pop pop up my leg and then it's, and then it's online. Problem with having it on your dominant leg side, the same leg as your dominant hand, is that it just widens your widens your leg a bit. So you are used to your your legs being in a certain position meaning that if you walk past objects, you are going to clear those objects normally. Now you've got this whole wider piece of metal, which actually does make a difference. And now you print a bit more, um, and then you start hitting it um, against objects as well. So this just gives away your your position um, of, your, of your firearm. So not an ideal situation. As with your wardrobe when carrying in the either appendix or on the uh, 4 o'clock position, you need to look at your wardrobe. You need to have a shirt that actually tucks it away um, so you can conceal it. The same goes for an ankle holster with long pants. So you can't wear your shorts anymore. You have to go with long pants. And also another consideration, it needs to have a bit of a, a wider pant leg. So something like a boot leg works, works perfectly. Or just a normal chino or something like that that goes a bit wider down and not like a skinny jean. You need two hands to be able to draw your weapon. So the same goes for, for normal positions as well. I need to be able to clear my gar garment to get my firearm out. But in an emergency, emergency situation where my hand might be busy with something else, 
I can just run my run run my hand up and then still draw with the with the one hand um, if I carry in the appendix position. Same goes for the four o'clock position. I can just get my thumb to to uh, defeat my defeat my garment and then draw my forearm. The same can't be said with your pants. Uh, problem with this is if you try to to grab with your uh, with your one hand. The pants just go skew, so meaning that that's the reason why I like to I like to grab high on my pants and then pull them up. Is you're not going to go skew on it, and it's not going to uh, it's not going to hook on your leg. <coughs> so that's why it's important to have two hands, and then that's why I use the high leg technique just to defeat the garment and then try to get it out. So as you can see, this is still relevant today. I think this is actually quite a quite a comfortable way of carrying as well. It does take a bit of bit of adjustment, but it's actually still comfortable. So the main advantages of this is you feel like a, an 80s detective out of out of a series or out of a out of an old movie. Um, it just it's got a bit of a cool factor, and very few people even think about uh, think about carrying the firearm like this. I know there's quite a few holsters that you can carry your Glock 43 in. Um, most of the subcompacts you, you can get holsters for them or this little 38 special um, revolver or the 357 revolvers. I think it's still relevant today like it was back in the wild west in the US um, when the guys used to used to have small small handguns in their in their boots. Just as a last resort they'll still carry their, their sidearm but in the parlor or close, close space or just as a backup you need that that's something extra as a surprise. So when you're when you getting attacked, an attacker will always use the element of surprise. So the thing is that you need to, when you're ambushed, have a counter ambush. That's why we carry firearms, is you need to be able to ambush them with a surprise, which they are not expecting. If you're carrying outside waistband and you're printing like a, like a police officer, the problem is that they already suspect or know that that you are going to go for your firearm. So what they're going to do is try to get control of that firearm. If you have deep concealment, meaning that no one can see that that you're carrying, there's no printing, there's no you giving it away. They don't suspect that you are going to pull a firearm and maybe end the fight there, or scare them off. So that's the main advantage, meaning that this is this is up, up right there. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a bit of a change with the normal Glock and Kydex holsters that you see from everyone that does, that does reviews on YouTube. Um, if you did enjoy it and you did enjoy the change of holsters, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Have a good one.